Okay, uh, so now that we've seen an example of shrinking the network, okay, we want to elaborate on that a little bit and see what other types of things we can do. Okay, now that we've seen uh, a little bit about the structure and we know that there is a missing link between Africa and Australia, there's no link in either direction, okay, now we know to look for that in the node link diagram because of what we saw in the matrix. We can actually um, take a look at some other things, right? Let's put the values of the lines back, okay? Let's mark those lines with labels again. Pardon me, not labels. We want to mark them with values. Okay, notice now what we should be seeing is the aggregate of this trade, okay, between the countries. Uh, so this is a, a little more manageable, okay? But, um, you know, and we, we could probably do an analysis of it at this point if we wanted to. But um, let's see what other types of things we can do when we start talking about shrinking networks. All right, so let's go back to the original. Okay, we're going to go back to this. And then, of course, we need the same corresponding set of continents here. We're going to shrink this again. But this time, we're actually going to leave Africa in its full state. Okay, so what we'll see is we're going to shrink all of the countries from all of the continents except Africa. Okay, so we'll pick the same number, right? We'll say we, we don't care how small it is. One is good enough. And then it'll ask us which cluster should you not shrink, okay? And Africa is cluster number one. Okay, so that's the one that we'll pick. And we say okay. Okay, and notice now we have 14 nodes and 14 partitions. All right, let's take a look at those partition values before we draw it. Okay, notice that anything that's in value one, meaning continent one, is represented at the country level. Okay, anything that's any any other countries are have all been aggregated into the continent level. Okay, and we can obviously change these labels back so that we can see them the way we want to. So this is. South America, okay, Australia we'll leave as is, but we'll remove the hash mark. We'd like Europe and Asia and North America. Okay, and now if we say redisplay. All right, so now what we should see, if we draw this network and its associated partition. Okay, now we see that Europe and Asia and Australia and South America and North America are all aggregated, but we see each of the uh, African countries um, basically on a, you know, as at the country level rather than at the continent level. Now, even though we can see this, we see we still have sort of a lot of clutter. So let's help ourselves move this stuff around. Okay, um, let's not mark the lines yet. Okay, let's start to play with some layouts. It's circular. Okay, let's try uh, Kamada Kawai. Okay, and we can see that we'll get something uh, very close to that core periphery structure even even now. Okay, um, one thing that you'll see is that Australia in a way is really just adding to some of the clutter, right? If we wanted to focus exclusively on African countries and we know that Australia and Africa don't trade directly, um, then maybe we might want to think about extracting the network and extracting Australia out of it. Okay, so that's the next thing that I want you to be able to see, that we can actually extract sub-networks from this network, right, just to, to make the clutter a little bit easier. And as it turns out, we're going to start with exactly the same um, situation, okay? What we need to do is go find the vertex that represents Australia, okay? That vertex number is two, okay? So we'll need to remember that. We need to pull out two. I mean, uh, pardon me. We need to pull out the value five. Sorry about that. Okay. And the way this will work, we'll go to, instead of using shrink network, we'll use extract network. Okay, we'll say partition. And it says, okay, which clusters do you want to include in your extraction? And the truth is, we want to include everything except five. Okay, so we say one through four. 
Okay, and then we say 6 through 14, right? And the 14 comes from here, okay, and here. So if we pull these out, right, and we extract them, okay, notice we have this, you know, the same number of nodes minus 1. And if we go to draw this, if we've done it right, we should see the same data without Australia. And that is exact. Pardon me, that is exactly what we see. Okay, so we have just extracted part of one, part of this sub-network from the original network. Okay, and this is the thing that I, I really want you to be able to see, that what you do with Pajek is to take a very large, complicated network and pare it down until it's something much more manageable. Okay, so now we feel like, if again, if we were studying uh, trade from Africa, if our focus was Africa, um, now we have a network that we, we can really work with. We've taken out all of the things that aren't necessarily relevant, like continents that don't trade with Africa. And now if we want to put in the lines and actually mark the lines with values and start to analyze the, the flows of money and imports and exports, now this is we're in sort of a better position to do this because at least we can say now that what we've included are each of the African countries and the continents that they trade with primarily. Okay, and we can actually start to, to work through this. And obviously this will involve a lot of visualization, right? We'll want to categorize these things and this may require us to, you know, try a few different things. We may want to um, manually move some of these things to help us out. Okay, but that's stuff that we'll talk about in class for the most part, like w where do we go from here? One last thing I want to show you before we leave I want to talk about vectors, okay? Vectors are very similar to partitions, okay? Generally, uh, the size of a vector will be virtually the same size, uh, pardon me, will be almost always uh, the same size as the size of the network, okay? But what vectors do is they actually store numbers that represent some value related to the network, okay? So for example, let's say we wanted to start taking some network measurements, Okay, and what we wanted to do is calculate betweenness. Okay, so for example, what I want to see is, you know, based on based on the network structure, which one of the continents is playing the the largest role in this trade? Okay, uh, when we do that, if we measure that kind of centrality, we probably want to take a look at betweenness. Okay, what we can do is we go to net, okay. we go down to vector, okay. we go to centrality. And we click betweenness, right? We want to calculate the betweenness centrality. Now remember, betweenness is a number, right? It's 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 a, a a decimal. So this will be stored as a vector, and each line in the .vec file will represent one node and the value, the betweenness value of that node. So we click betweenness, and voila, we have a new entry in the vector table, okay, in the in the vector accumulator. And just if you want to get a sense of what this looks like, it's all of the labels, right, with the betweenness value. Okay, so we can see it for each of the things. So we can actually look at it at the data level if we like. Okay, and just like any other structure, we can also visualize it. This time what we want to do, instead of drawing with the partition, we want to draw with the vector, okay? So we have those values ready. We draw with the vector, and notice it's going to take the, based on the size, right, of the betweenness, it will recast the size of the actual object. So visually, we can see now that Asia has the highest betweenness number. And if we want to verify that, we can just come here and say, mark vertices using vector values. And now Asia will have a rounded version of its betweenness, and so will Europe, and so will North America, and so on. So now we can actually see uh, which countries have higher, which countries and continents have higher betweenness than other countries and continents, and we can use this to um, move move our analysis a little bit further. So this has been the sort of introduction to uh, Pajek. Uh, you've seen how we use networks, uh, partitions, and vectors to do some uh, small analysis. And uh, just keep practicing with the software and uh, develop those capabilities.